Then finally, Matthew dropped the bomb. Starting next month, mom will move in with us. Clear out your room. When she's discharged, I'm bringing her straight here. Living together would mean less hassle with housework, but it would also mean facing Flora every day, and during her constant snide remarks, my heart sank in despair. Understood, I replied. It seemed he was determined to force this cohabitation with Flora. Rather than argue and protest, it seemed wiser to secretly plan a countermeasure. Years of experience had taught me this. Matthew left blissfully unaware. Everything was going according to my plan. It was so simple, it almost made me laugh. Hours later, as I was taking a breather after packing up, my mobile phone blared. It was a flustered Matthew. Hey, what's going on? The house is empty. I am Camilla, a 45-year-old working mother and department head at a publishing company. My family consists of my husband, two kids, and a perfectly ordinary household. When I got married, the term balancing work and family had just started becoming popular. In an era when it was typical for women to quit their jobs after marriage, my husband Matthew allowed me to keep working. In return, I put my all into my job, housework, and later childcare. But lately, I've been feeling overwhelmed. Flora, my mother-in-law who had initially opposed my working, had started complaining. Camilla, how long will you keep working? Neglecting Matthew, you're such a terrible wife. In our days, work was secondary. A wife's duty was to devote herself to her family, she'd say. Despite juggling work, housework, and childcare, I believed I was repaying Matthew for his support. Perhaps because they saw my efforts, my kids helped out in their own ways. My daughter took care of laundry and ironing, while my son cleaned the bathroom and prepared baths daily. They made sure everything was ready, so all I had to do after work was prepare and clean up after meals. But Matthew, despite both of us working, did nothing around the house. I had asked him several times to help with chores. His response was always the same. I allowed you to keep working as a woman, and now you shirk your duties as a wife and want me to do housework for your convenience? Don't be absurd. And every time Flora would tattle on me, leading to more of her sarcastic comments. Matthew is the breadwinner of this house. How can you make him do housework? That's what's wrong with women working. Remember, it's your selfishness that's letting you work. Understand that. Lately, Flora seems bored. Every night, she'd call to make these snide remarks. The frequency and nature of her calls were so bad that both my kids and I were fed up. Lately, my kids would pretend to call me to end the conversations. I appreciate Matthew allowing me to continue working, but why do I have to endure this? I've been doing all the housework and childcare by myself. Doesn't Flora understand how hard it is to balance both? Right now, I'm feeling incredibly stressed. The only solace is that my children are on my side. Why do I feel this way? It boils down to Matthew's salary. To be frank, Matthew's income isn't that high. In fact, it's on the lower end. He failed in job hunting and managed to get a position in a small company through a relative's connection. If he had tried hard, I wouldn't complain about the low income and would fully support him. But Matthew became resentful due to nepotism. I should be working in a bigger, more prestigious company. He'd often mutter. He just did as he was told, never trying to improve or find a better job. A truly capable person would study and hone their skills while working to seek better job opportunities. But Matthew didn't. Thus, his salary increased only due to a seniority system. He was always at the bottom rank for performance-based or commission pay. On the other hand, the company I work for is a national corporation that had early on established maternity and paternity leave policies. Despite the recession, the company's solid management prevented drastic salary cuts, making it a reputable business. Moreover, I've been promoted to position of department head. Until reaching this position, I successfully managed numerous contracts and projects. Naturally, my salary is significantly higher than Matthew's. The children are under my care, and I've been using salary deductions to save up for their education. I took full advantage of the welfare benefits offered by working for a large corporation. Looking back, it seems that during the times I took maternity leave for our two children and had no salary, we lived off my savings. Matthew's salary alone could never cover all our living expenses with children. I don't recall ever receiving living expenses from Matthew, nor is there any record of him transferring money. 
Perhaps he agreed to let me work because he's counted on my earnings. Lately, I've been thinking more about this. Since our marriage, haven't we almost entirely been living off my salary? To confirm my suspicions, I checked my bank passbook. Rent, utilities, groceries, the kids' tuition. I've paid for it all. Not a single dollar from Matthew's account. <laughs> I laughed, feeling somewhat drained. Matthew's salary, it seems, vanishes into his hobbies and allowances for Flora. I've always thought of the fact that Matthew allowed me to continue working as a favor. That's why I've worked so hard at home and with the kids. But what's the current situation? I'm covering all the living expenses, while Matthew's salary goes untouched, used at his discretion. In terms of supporting the household, couldn't it be said that I'm the breadwinner? If covering all living expenses allows Matthew to do as he pleases, can't I say I've repaid him for letting me work? Still, Matthew's usual line is, I'm the one providing for this family. If you have a problem, leave. What is he thinking when he says, I'm the one providing? Does he believe he's covering living expenses despite spending his salary however he likes? It's utterly baffling and incomprehensible. If I, who pay for everything, were to leave with the children, what would happen? Or if I threw this passbook at him and told him to leave, would he quietly go? But claiming to be head of the household, he's likely to tattle to Flora again. Does Flora know about the difference in our salaries? No. If she did, she surely wouldn't be able to make such snide remarks. She must think her son is a wonderful provider, acknowledging his wife's employment. What would she think if she knew about our salary amounts? Would she ditch Matthew and start cozying up to me? No. That's the last thing I want. What would happen to Matthew and Flora if we separated? Tired of Flora's snide remarks, I found myself pondering such things. In the midst of all this, Flora fell at home and hurt her leg. She seems to need hospitalization for treatment and rehabilitation. My father-in-law passed away before Matthew and I got married, and Flora has been living alone. So either Matthew or I have to take care of her. Are you going to leave me alone in the state? Hurry up and come to the hospital. My leg hurts so much I can't move, and there's so much I need you to do. I got an immediate call from Flora after she was hospitalized. As soon as I answered, she bombarded me with requests. Bring this. I want to eat that. When I tried to say I was at work, Flora hurled abuses at me. With my job being hectic, I decided to leave Flora's care to Matthew. Honestly, dealing with Flora's sarcasm while working is a major stressor. For now, it's better to flatter Matthew. Have him go to the hospital and keep Flora in a good mood. When I asked Matthew to take care of Flora, he immediately complained. Hey, Camilla, why aren't you looking after mom? I'm working, you know. His own mother, yet he expects his wife to handle all her care? Can't he at least manage the first one or two visits himself? I held back what I wanted to say and responded. I'm working too, plus there's housework. If you could handle things at home, I could go. Besides, Flora would probably be happier with you visiting her. That was the truth. There might be ways to vent stress by making snide remarks to a wife, but when immobile, it's better to think and voice positive things than sarcasm or insults. That's how I've been avoiding taking care of Flora. Instead, I neatly wash and fold Flora's laundry and pack it in a bag. If Flora asks me to buy something, I check the product names and purchase them. I don't mind being spoken ill of if it means letting Matthew take the credit. At this point, I just didn't want to hear any of Flora's sarcasm. Thankfully, my approach was working. Flora seems to be greeting Matthew with a full smile every day. Apparently, being cherished by her son means a lot to a mother like Flora. Having her beloved son by her side, instead of a wife who might invite sarcasm, certainly seems to lift her spirits. She seems to be waiting eagerly every day for Matthew to come home from work. Just thinking about talking to Matthew must take up all her attention. She's been giving shopping lists directly to Matthew, and since she was admitted, she hasn't called me at all. Seeing Flora smiling, Matthew seems to feel like he's fulfilling his filial duties, returning home in a good mood. When he comes home at night, he just hands me laundry and shopping lists, no complaints anymore. Though I still get nagged by Matthew when handing over Flora stuff. I've been able to live peacefully. It doesn't matter. Right now, I just don't want to hear Flora's sarcasm. That's what I was thinking, muttering to myself in the middle of the night. I hope this peace lasts for a while.
But injuries at Flora's age tend to have lasting effects. I urged Flora to keep up with her rehab through Matthew, but Flora, happy with her son's visits, often skipped it. As a result, her leg weakened by the time her injury healed. Matthew could only visit her in the evening after work. Despite this, Flora didn't go to her daytime rehab, preferring to wait for Matthew's visit in her room. And getting a taste for her son's care, Flora began asking Matthew for more and more favors. Although I was rarely called upon directly, I was the one actually doing the laundry and such. Grocery shopping, laundry, and even bringing snacks became an everyday occurrence. I was stuck doing all the housework while Matthew just sat in the hospital room enjoying chats with his mother. Not having to face Flora was a relief, but I was still exhausted. The constant requests from Flora, especially the shopping, were a considerable hassle. I understand she's bored in the hospital, but why does she want so many things? If her leg weakness continued, living alone would become increasingly inconvenient. Flora seemed to realize this too. That's when she made an outrageous request to Matthew. Oh dear, I can't move my leg anymore. Shopping and preparing meals has become so difficult. Matthew, don't leave your mother alone. Of course, Matthew sided with Flora. Yeah, maybe we should live together. Having Camilla take care of you would be more convenient for you, Mom. The two of them had been moving forward with the plan to live together without consulting me. And finally, Matthew dropped the bomb. Starting next month, Mom will move in with us. Clear out your room. I'm bringing her straight here after she's discharged. Living together would mean less hassle with housework. But that's only efficient from Flora's perspective. As for me, it means facing Flora every day. Enduring her constant snide remarks, I was already feeling hopeless. Matthew seemed to have already decided that living together was a done deal. Understood, I replied weakly. It seemed he was determined to force his cohabitation with Flora. Rather than argue and protest, it seemed wiser to secretly plan a countermeasure. Years of experience had taught me this. While Matthew and Flora were happily preparing for their cohabitation, I was thinking of ways to escape. I have my own room at home because I often work on documents and research. It's full of books and files. It's a study, or rather a workroom, indispensable to me now, and Matthew wants me to vacate this room. Without it, my work would be affected. I might end up coming home even later than now. I was muttering to myself while looking at my bookshelf. Where should I take these books and files? I can't leave them here. They might get thrown away or damaged. If I'm going to live with Flora, it's better not to keep them at home. It sounds like something out of a TV drama, but I really might end up having my books and documents thrown away. Moreover, it's likely that Flora would start tampering with things she knows are important to me first. And if I dared complain, she'd feign ignorance and run to Matthew for help. I didn't know they were important documents, Matthew. Camilla is mad at me for no reason. Help me. I can imagine her cozying up to Matthew like that. Once we start living together, there will be no place of solace for me in this house. I'll be overwhelmed, constantly harangued for working, and my nerves will be frayed. What should I do? In this house? Wait. Since Flora is coming to this house, I should... Suddenly it hit me. Why hadn't I thought of such a simple solution before? Dealing with Flora's sarcasm and caregiving must have worn me out more than I realized. I felt as if a fog in front of me was lifting. That's right. There's no need to hold back. How did I not realize something so simple? I muttered to myself and started making preparations immediately. Then, as the month turned, Flora's discharge day arrived. Matthew took the day off, looking excited since morning. Hey, from now on, you better take proper care of Mom. Don't think I'll let you off like when she was hospitalized. Matthew commanded, but I ignored it and changed the subject. Ah, right. Here, take this. Flora's been in the hospital for quite a while, right? Hospital food is bland and limited. I bet gourmet Flora found it unsatisfying. It'll be lunchtime by the time you finish discharge procedures and pack her stuff. So why don't you two go out for some delicious food? You've taken the day off. A drive together would be nice. I'm sure Flora would love it. I handed Matthew a generous amount of cash. It was more than the monthly allowance I accounted for in the living expenses. Elated by this unexpected windfall, Matthew agreed. Yeah, you're pretty considerate after all. All right, I'll take Mom for a drive with this money. I'll call about dinner. You make sure the house is nice and comfortable for Mom. 
Matthew left happily, no suspicions whatsoever. Just as I planned. So simple, it made me laugh. <laughs> this should buy me some time. I was almost looking forward to Matthew and Flora's return. With that, I continued cleaning the house. I had to finish before Matthew and Flora came back. A few hours later, as I was taking a breather, my mobile phone rang loudly. It was a flustered Matthew. Hey, what's going on? The house is empty. Right after Matthew left to pick up Flora, I had moved our belongings to a new apartment I rented. Of course, I left only a few of Matthew's personal items and Flora's futon in the room. Already back. Since you said to clear out the room, I emptied the room and living room to make it comfortable for Flora. Enjoy your time together. I replied nonchalantly, and Matthew began to rage. Are you kidding me? The living room and kitchen are empty. After all, I do provide for this family. How could you do this? There it was, his usual line. Thinking it puts him in a superior position, so optimistic. No, I've been the one providing for the family, including you. You've been spending your salary on allowances for Flora and your hobbies, right? And still demanding an allowance from our household budget? How does that make you the provider? Matthew was shocked at my defiance, but tried to argue back with his flawed logic. Shut up. I'm the man, the head of this household. You're the wife. You, the wife, should just obey me. Bring back the furniture right now. No, I won't. The living room furniture and kitchen utensils? I bought them all with my salary. Oh, and the kids are with me, so no need to worry. I've been paying for everything in that house. Rent, utilities, groceries. That makes me the head. How could you decide to live with Flora without consulting me? I can't live with someone so selfish. As you wish, you can be the head who supports himself. Live however you like. Matthew seemed to realize my intentions. W wait you mean the rent for the houses? Yes, I'm covering it until the end of this month. But you'll pay starting next month. Electricity, gas, internet? I've canceled all the direct debits. Good luck. Realizing what was happening from Matthew's words, Flora also began to make a scene loudly. What a terrible wife she is, getting all high and mighty because she works. Hm, it's fine. I'll just live a rich life here with Matthew. Oh, does Flora not know about Matthew's earnings? It would be nice to have a rich life, if only Matthew earned that much. Well, then, goodbye. Wait, Camilla, where are you? I cut off Matthew's call without listening to the end and blocked all contact with Matthew and Flora. Matthew's salary from his lackluster job at a small company was barely enough to cover rent and utilities. I could only imagine Matthew and Flora squabbling in the unnecessarily large room where a family of four once lived. What's this, the meat? Can't you think of serving something better to your mother? Shut up, then prepare it yourself. Complaining about rehab? Saying walking's too much trouble? A mother who doesn't do anything is just a nuisance. Flora, having skipped rehab and weakened her legs, didn't even try to train at home. Frustrated that her legs didn't move as she wished, she began to make unreasonable demands on Matthew, the son she once doted on. Perhaps a bit of dementia had set in. Even adding Flora's pension, they seemed to be living in poverty. They'd be better off moving to a smaller place suitable for two, but Matthew didn't seem to think of that. He must have tried to contact me many times, but I had completely blocked all communication with Matthew and Flora since then. Of course, the children had also blocked their contacts at the time of the move. I hadn't given Matthew our new address, and he couldn't ask for help. Eventually, their living situation would likely collapse. With the children's help, I was making enough to contract a nice apartment. The kids each had their own rooms, and I secured a spacious room that doubled as a bedroom and workspace. Even if the rent was a bit high, the savings from Matthew's absence more than made up for it. The children, tired of their father's belittling words, now lived more freely. Their willingness to help around the house had also increased. No longer being scolded by their father, they're happy to help. Really, in any family, if a child helps out, they should be praised or thanked. I'm glad they haven't become twisted. I was returning to the apartment where my children waited. Later, I sent divorce papers to Matthew through a lawyer. I have been supporting the family with my salary, since he's been his on himself and Flora. It was more than enough reason for divorce. Matthew tried to refuse the divorce, spouting his views, 
but was skillfully handled by the lawyer. Claiming to be the head of the family, while not contributing financially, was called verbal abuse and economic, domestic violence. In this situation, even if I went to court, Matthew had no chance of winning. I obtained custody of the children. In exchange for not demanding alimony and child support, I agreed to no distribution of property. The savings I had accumulated for the children's education were all from my salary. I couldn't bear the thought of Matthew and Flora taking it. The car was already in my name, and the house was rented. I was grateful we had bought a house. Now I could focus on my work without anyone complaining. I wanted to let my children do what they enjoyed, supported by the savings and my future earnings. I should be able to cover their university expenses. All right, let's work hard today, too.